Hey guys, I hope you're doing well today. I am in LA. I have my surgery at UCLA this week. So we are actually in the car. So please ignore the, the car noises because I wanted to continue to post about SCDS, raise awareness and educate on what it is and how it affects the people that are diagnosed. Another thing I wanted to mention today are two names that I did not discuss the other day. It's also referred to pretty commonly as the third window syndrome, as well as minor syndrome. Again, a disclaimer, I am not a medical professional. I've never been medically trained or educated. I am giving a dissertation of the symptoms today based on research that I have done personally, as well as meeting with providers personally and having the syndrome myself. So I'm going to categorize our symptoms. I'm going to start talking about the primary ones first, and then I'll talk about what I call kind of the secondary, which are symptoms that are pretty much caused by the primary symptoms. There are three areas of your body <clears throat> that SCDS affects. It affects your vestibular system, it affects your visual systems, as well as your audio systems. So we'll kind of start with just a, a high overview of the symptoms, and then we'll look at it a, a little more in detail. So when we start to talk about the vestibular system, the main symptoms that folks experience are vertigo, as well as Tullio syndrome, osolepsia, and when you talk about Tulios, that's really starting to get into the visual symptoms as well. And another visual symptom as we go into this category would be nystagmus. Going into the audio symptoms, you experience autophony as well as, <laughs> you'll know why I have brain fog later. You have autophony as well as tinnitus and earfulness. So I'm probably, <laughs> I'd be right there with you. Like, what did this lady just say? All of these words are crazy. Never heard of them. And it is a very rare condition. So, you know, some of these diagnoses are specific to this syndrome. So let's go back to the vestibular or balance system. So, you know, typically your vestibular system has that bony enclosure. It's an enclosed space. Um, it prevents the vibrations from entering where it shouldn't. So when you have the dehiscence or the absence of the bone, your vibration from sound comes in and it starts to move those little hair cells that detect rotation. So when we talk about tulios, which is sound-induced vertigo, what happens is sound, and it, you know, can be really any range of sound, any type of sound, comes in, the vibrations from the sound start to enter your vestibular system the way that it should not, and moving those little hairs. So a lot of people um, describe it in different ways, it's pretty much like you're in an earthquake. Um, you have unsteadiness, things seem like they're moving. That really brings us into the obsolacia, which is basically the phenomenon that you think that stationary items around you are moving. So sound induces the vertigo. It makes you feel very unsteady. It makes you think that things are moving that are not. A lot of times people talk about their eyes kind of jumping or bouncing or the world is wobbly. So I kind of like to just say an earthquake. Um, that kind of explains it um, to some degree. Getting it more into the visual symptoms, the nystagmus is involuntary rapid eye movement. And the nystagmus in this instance is caused 
by sound. So again, sound is coming in and it is making your eyes move involuntarily. I usually call it, it makes my eyes shake is what I say in easy terms for people to understand. As we move into the audio symptoms, that's where things start to get a little weird. And really this is like the main symptom that starts ENTs or other professionals down the road of giving a proper diagnosis. So the main audio symptom is autophony. And just like you would think from the, the base or root of those words, it literally means hearing yourself. So people with SCDS can hear the inside of their body, which includes, but is not limited to, your heartbeat, your blood flow, your joints, your muscles, you can hear your eyes move. You can hear a whole host of things um, that happen inside of your body that traditionally you should not hear. And again, it's because you have that, you know, absence of bone or dehiscence. So autophony is something that can definitely be extremely annoying and cause, you know, a lot of mental health issues. You never have peace and quiet. You always hear things. It's, it's definitely a, a very, difficult disturbance that is caused by this syndrome. You also have tinnitus. So there is a little bit of controversy around whether people with SCDS have regular tinnitus, pulsating tinnitus, both. Um, so tinnitus is the ringing. So you have different pitches of ringing in your ears. The pulsating tinnitus, it comes kind of in waves and may be associated with like maybe how your blood is flowing, that type of thing. So there is definitely tinnitus associated. Hearing loss, conductive hearing loss, is another kind of audio symptom that is seen pretty commonly. So low threshold um, hearing loss as well as conductive hearing loss are two things that are commonly found in people who have this syndrome. Earfulness, uh, so basically uh, whenever you, you have earfulness, it, it kind of, you know, feels like you have a head cold, um, but there's really like no fluid or anything that should be causing the earfulness, but it also makes it, you know, a little difficult to hear and it's uncomfortable. So I do want to go back to kind of the original list with vestibular and just mention that it's not always noise induced. It actually can be intracranial pressure induced. So when your intracranial pressure rises, so when you call it, cough, sneeze, strain, um, maybe bend over because that increases your intracranial pressure, that also can trigger any of these symptoms in accompaniment with noise. So going into kind of the subsequential, so nausea is a, a big symptom. Obviously it's caused by the chulios, it's caused by the vertigo, it's caused by, you know, your, your nystagmus, the unsteadiness. Also, you have a lot of brain fog, uh, as you can see, sometimes I forget things. So just kind of like, you know, trying to get things to come to mind or, you know, remembering your words, you typically have a lot of brain fog. And another one is your fatigue. So you're tired, you're tired all the time and you have the brain fog because your brain is working so hard to fight and correct all of the things that are happening that are not natural and you know should not be occurring and should not be escaping into your vestibular area. So those are all of the, the uh, there's one more. So we also have a very sensitive hearing, so sensitivity to noise in general, as well as um, heightened hearing through bone conduction. So if you were to take like a pitchfork or a tuning fork and touch it to a knee of someone who has SCDS on the side or sides that they have the dehiscence, they would hear basically like a ringing tone in their ear. So any type of noise or sound that conducts through our bones or can conduct through our bones, folks with SCDS can hear very well. Um, my son calls it my superpower, so that's my superpower is kind of hearing stuff that is conducted through my body. 
So I think that I've covered the majority of the main symptoms as well as, you know, kind of what those symptoms cause. Um, you know, there's definitely other things like disturbances with sleep that a lot of people with SCDS, you know, typically experience. And, and that's obviously because you, you never have quiet. You're hearing the inside of your body. You have, you know, chronic fatigue where your brain has been working so hard. So there's definitely some things with sleep. Um, that can affect you and I almost forgot migraines and headaches so just imagine I'm sure that you understand at this point why someone with SCDS would get very common or chronic headaches and migraines on a regular basis so I am so glad that you joined me today I really hope that this helps explain kind of what this dehiscence does to, you know, folks that are diagnosed, whether it be you, your loved ones, your friends, your colleagues, um, you know, it's, or if maybe you're on the journey to a diagnosis because you're having odd things happen in your life and, you know, you're not feeling so great. So I can want to continue to raise awareness around SCDS and I will continue to post videos to educate talk about what it is, what it does, and then ultimately I will get to my story. So what I've experienced personally, I can't wait to share with everyone. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you again soon. See ya. Bye. If you or someone you know have or are experiencing some of the symptoms we discussed here today, I encourage you to reach out to your primary care physician to discuss these symptoms as well as finding a specialist in the ear, nose, and throat or neck and head specialty to visit and discuss more about the symptoms. In order to get diagnosed, you must see a specialist. Typically, there is a CT scan. It must be at the correct slice size. And also you go through various balance, audio, and BIMP testing. These are standard tests to diagnose SCDS. And for more information, I have included a few very helpful links in the description part of this video. Thank you. See you guys next time.